asked God what time it was to have this, I thought someone was sure to do a story about a nun. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> My mother was fragile. At least growing up, I thought she was. If you take the events that occurred in her life and look at them as individual episodes, you probably wouldn't come to the same conclusion. When I, as an adult, look at those same events as a whole, as a series of incidents that were survived by one person, the only logical conclusion is that she's anything but fragile. She successfully navigated twists and turns that no one saw coming. And through it all, she kept her head held high and her voice never wavered. Now, my mother's twists and turns were often of her own making. She was nobody's victim, and she was not always an innocent bystander in the story of her own life. My parents sent us to a Catholic school for what promised to be a better education, but the trouble is, we were barely Catholic. My mother, a perennial seeker, sensed my inclination to follow along on her path to enlightenment. So she backed me in the old Green Rambler and took me to the spiritual church on weekends and all manner of Muktananda and Nityananda in the evenings during the week. My sisters were old enough to escape this religious vortex. And my brother was too young to attend. I didn't mind the church at all. The little old ladies tripped over themselves, pressing shiny silver dimes into my hands after every service. Eventually, the old preacher let me sing solos during the service, and magically, those dimes became quarters. I didn't really mind the Krishna jive, either. The incense was a new experience, the hippie chicks were fascinating, and the food was like nothing I'd ever eaten before. My father would sit outside on the porch and smoke cigarettes, while the enlightened went into a room to meditate. There was one occasion where I had the nerve to actually sit back, meaning my feet were indelicately placed between me and the picture of one of the swamis. The hippies got pretty pissed. Even then, I was amused at the impotent rage of a gaggle of furry hippies. My parents decided that was a good time to put an end to the meditation hours. The next morning, they found me back in the classroom in my wrinkled blue shirt and clip-on tie, getting pitched in private by the nuns who took great relish in delivering pain, both physical and psychological. <laughs> the thing my mother sought most aggressively throughout the, her journey was acceptance from her own mother. Knowing that void, knowing the void that the lack of acceptance left in her life, she was never one to shy away from giving her acceptance and her love to her children. That is not to say that she was all that well suited for motherhood, but she gave it all she had. Born with a condition that was, as best as we can understand, like hemophilia, she spent the better part of her early years in special education halls of Parker High School in Chicago's Inglewood neighborhood. The earliest picture I remember of her was a faded out black and white with the kids glaring back into the sun. One boy sat in a wheelchair. One girl supported herself on tiny little wooden crutches. Their bright, brave smiles confused me. You can see in that picture, my mother's remarkable beauty was inevitable. Now, she never had a career like most mothers, we knew growing up. Her journey seemed to involve sampling as many types of jobs as she could until she, found, until she landed at a place where she felt at home. She wouldn't stop seeking until she felt accepted by those around her. She spent a few years as a switchboard operator at the county jail. As kids, we anticipated her days off, sipping tea and smoking Newports with my grandmother, while our mother regaled her mother with stories of pimps and hookers and other shady denizens of that faraway place at 26th in California. When she became an administrative assistant for a tool and die company, her story took a decided to turn from the exotic to the boring, and the kids found other ways to entertain themselves. She eventually settled in and became a minister at the old spiritual church on the city's west side. She had finally found her place in the sun. We were all curious how long this was going to last. Now, I have followed her lead. I have spent most of my life seeking a place I could call home. 
I'm rarely comfortable in my own skin. I hope to someday find a place where I can be absolutely comfortable. There's a time I thought it would be music. Through a series of circumstances completely beyond my control, I found myself hanging with people who were from much more privileged circumstances than my own. One disgruntled guitar player, one stone drummer, and one overachieving bass player later, and I was in one of the most popular bands in the neighborhood. We played youth centers, we played bars, we played enough on the weekends that we could actually go to school during the week. My mother quickly appointed herself the band's merch lady. She set up tables at gigs and sold buttons and t-shirts and autographed pictures. She became the mother of the band and, to be honest, some of the groupies. I remember her appearing so happy sitting at that table on her custom printed long sleeve black t-shirt. The band's name, Paradise Lost, and blazed down each sleeve, and her name, Mom, embroidered over her heart. <laughs> As always, there was one component that kept her unsatisfied. When she thought she found it, the seismic shifts in our world were set into motion. My mother left my father for one of the roadies in the band. By this point, my mother was more Kathy Bates than Kathleen Turner. <laughs> she had found a 19-year-old kid who made her feel special. She packed up my younger brother and some of her clothes and left in the middle of a post-gig beer bash at my father's house. 